Starting off at number 10, Rumpelstiltskin. So you probably heard this one growing up, or at least the name tossed around. Basically, a king finds out a girl can spin straw into gold, even though she can't, locks her up into a room and says, do it, spin some straw into gold for me, or you die. And so, a creature decides to help her in return for gifts, and she eventually promises this creature man her firstborn kid. And so the king marries her, being like, you can spin straw into gold, wild. Then they have a baby, and the creature man thing says, you can keep your baby if you can guess my name in three days. This creature, of course, is Rumpelstiltskin, which is a lovely name. But the now queen now overhears him saying his name, so she guesses right, and he is so mad he tears himself in half. Specifically, he plunged his right foot so deep into earth that his whole leg went in, and then in rage he pulled at his leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. Yeah, so fairy tales. Woo! Ripped in half. On to number nine, Rapunzel. In this tale of Rapunzel and the Brothers Grimm version, Rapunzel is not the princess. She's actually the firstborn of a woman that had a craving for the lettuce type that is called Rapunzel. And this woman told her husband that if she didn't eat some of this, she would die, which is relatable. So her husband stole that lettuce called Rapunzel enough time that the enchantress that grew the lettuce said, oh boy, you shouldn't do that or I'll take your firstborn child. So he looked at the lettuce, looked at the enchantress and said, deal. And the couple gave the baby to the enchantress later on because we just want some lettuce, obviously. Anyways, fast forward through Rapunzel up in the tower, letting her hair down for Gothel, all that. One day a prince comes along and hears Rapunzel singing and he calls up to her to let her hair down and they start hanging out. Tinder could never. So even with all that, Gothel does find out, cuts off Rapunzel's hair and then leaves her in the desert. Then she waits in the tower for the prince and says, boy, Rapunzel's gone, you'll never see her again. And then the prince is so beside himself in agony that he throws himself out the tower. He survived the 20 story fall, but he landed in bushes where thorns pierced into his eyes and he was blinded. He roamed around blind for years to come until he stumbled upon the familiar voice of Rapunzel. Her tears healed his eyes and they went back to his kingdom with their twins and they lived happily ever after. So in three words, this story is kidnapping, blindness, and lettuce. On to number eight, Thumbling. So this is Thumbling, not Thumbelina. In this one, a couple has a child that is so tiny and it never grows bigger, but they love their son Thumbling anyways. Wholesome beginnings, I love it. But then some people find out and they say they will buy Thumbling since they think they will make a load of money parading him around. So the dad is like, no, I don't want this, I love my son, but Thumbling is a bit of a trickster and says, take the money, dad, I'll find my way back. Thumbling does find his way back, but only after running away from the people who bought him, being eaten by a cow, cut out of the cow, then eaten by a wolf, and then tricking the wolf to eat at his parents' house, and then his parents kill the wolf and cut him out of the wolf. And then he's like, I made it back. What an entrance. It, it is a happily ever after, but gruesome. I feel like they cut into so many animals in these. You'll see, there's more. Bringing us next to number seven, Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel, if you will. German names, you can tell. Origins, the Grimm brothers, Brothers Grimm. So this one starts right into it. The family is so poor they don't have enough to eat, so the stepmother in the family turns to the father and says, let's leave them out into the forest, give them each a piece of bread, and leave them. And she keeps bugging him until he relents and says, I'll do it, but I won't be happy about it. So they do their plan, but Hansel left a trail of light rock so they could find their way back to the house. So then the parents go through the same argument and do the same plan later, but this time Hansel didn't have time to gather rocks, so he left little trails of bread instead. But bread didn't really stay put, Pigeons and other birds kind of took it and were like, hmm, lunch. So they didn't have their way back. So then Hansel and Gretel are two or three days wandering in the forest and come upon, boom, the witch in the beautiful house made of candy and goodies. And I feel like we all know this part. The witch starts out nice, uses Gretel to help her cook the meals and then trying to fatten Hansel up to eat them. But then she gets impatient, lights an oven, is like, Gretel, you should crawl in and see if it's, you know, warm yet. And Gretel's like, I know what you're trying to do. I don't know how to get into the oven. So then the witch peeks their head in, Gretel shoves them in the oven, Boom, locks it up, burns the witch alive. Cause this, this is how fairy tales go, apparently. And yet they listen to the witch scream until their screams ring out and the witch is dead. They take the riches from the witch's house, go home and their dad is just there and the stepmother's dead with no explanation. In three words, this one is deceit, de witch, and de death. Let's move on to number six, Cinderella. This Cinderella is pretty similar in both versions, but it's just a bit more grim in the grim version, you know? First of all, the stepsisters in the grim version are not outwardly ugly in this one. They are beautiful, just horrible people. The stepmother and stepsisters make Cinderella's life miserable until her fairy godmother steps in. And in this version, her fairy godmother is a magical tree with little birds. Then much the same happens with Cinderella going to the ball, making the prince swoon, and leaving a shoe that is so small because she has such tiny little feet. Then, because the stepsisters wanted to marry into royalty so bad, they did what they could to get into the shoe. One cut off a toe and one cut off a heel. Just like, oh, I really want this. I'm just gonna 
cut parts of my feet off? I don't know. The prince notices when blood is rushing out of the shoe and is like, I, I don't think you're the person. I don't recognize your face or your feet. One apparently is more important than the other. Oh, and also at the very end of the story, the stepsisters try to weasel their way back into Cinderella's good graces and get their eyes pecked out by pigeons. So this one in three words, labor, feet, and karma. Moving on to number five, Frog Prince, which you may think about Princess and the Frog similar. So in modern versions of this tale, the spell on the Frog Prince is broken by a kiss from the princess, or even by spending three days on the princess's pillow. But did you know the real origins? In the original, the princess becomes so frustrated and disgusted that she throws the frog against a wall and then he's revealed to be a prince. So first just like brutally throwing this frog and then a prince. This is supposed to be a fairy tale? Great metaphor, obviously. You don't eat a frog and then get a prince. That doesn't make sense. On to number four, Little Snow White, AKA Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So a queen had Snow White and died while she was born. Then the king took another wife who was really vain and that queen spoke into a mirror that told her that she was the fairest of them all. And so this happened until Snow White grew up and the mirror said Snow White was more beautiful. So then the new queen hated her. And this is supposed to be her stepmom. Grim has got a thing against stepmoms, I feel. So anyways, this queen told the huntsman to take Snow White into the forest and cut out her heart and bring it back. So he was going to, and then he was like, Ugh, I can't cut out the heart of a wild boar instead and brought that to the queen. The queen, thinking it was Snow White's heart, got the cook to cook it for her and then ate it. Just like, yeah. What? No. Anyways, Snow White meets up with the dwarves, yada, 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 becomes their housemaid for safety food and a place to stay. But then the queen finds out, dresses up as a witch, tries to kill Snow White three times, one with a really tight corset, one with a poisoned comb, and then finally, poisoned apple. So yes, Snow White was as good as dead. The dwarves put her in a glass coffin and then on a mountain with at least one dwarf watching out for her. Just kind of unique, but I'll go with it. But then a king's son found her and asked if he could buy her in the coffin from the dwarves. <laughs> Just buying a dead body, not suspicious at all. They said, no, 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 no. But then the prince asked if he could have her as a gift, just like he would treasure her, and they said yes. <laughs> so not for the money, but for just the niceness. Anyways, while carrying the glass coffin, some of his guards, I assume, the poison apple dislodged from her throat when the coffin fell, and then she was back to life, and then her and the prince wed. Romance at its finest, I know. At the wedding, the evil queen had to dance in iron shoes that were molten hot until she dropped dead. On to number three, the donkey. So you've heard of donkey from Shrek, but have you heard of the donkey? This one's a roller coaster, so strap in, I will stick to the main points. A king and queen had a kid, but it came out as a donkey. The queen was not having it, but the king decided they should raise this donkey as they would a child. So this noble donkey grows up well-mannered and even mastered the loot. It's kind of wild, but I like it. And it gets wilder. So the donkey travels to another kingdom, befriends the king, marries the princess, and is found out by the servant that is spying on the donkey on behalf of the king that the entire time it's been a man in a donkey suit. Yep, entire time a man dressing up as a donkey. That means since birth, this man has been dressing up as a donkey, taking all the ridicule that comes with it and making an ass out of himself, literally. The king burns the donkey skin suit and says, live your truth, man. So in the end, donkey man gets his wife's kingdom when her father dies, his own kingdom, and just has everything he wants and he's no longer in a donkey skin suit. Please tell me what you think the moral of this story is down below. <laughs> Number two, the mouse, the bird, and the sausage. So a mouse, a bird, and a sausage are all living together as a cohesive household unit. Bird gets the wood for the fire, mouse gets the water, lights the fire, and sets the table, and then the sausage cooks for them to all eat well. When the sausage cooks, they even dip themselves into the pot to add a little bit of seasoning. Then one day they try to switch it up, but the sausage gets eaten by a dog while it tries to get the wood for the fire. The mouse goes into the pot to try to season it, just like sausage, but it dies, and then the bird falls into the well while trying to get water. I think this story is trying to say stick to what you're good at, but that doesn't seem like the best moral of a story. Leave that one to you again. Lastly, let's move on to number one, Little Red Cap, which is a variation of Little Red Riding Hood, possibly. There is another variation by Perrault called Le Petit Chaperon Rouge, which is a different tale, but today we are talking about the Grimm story, so let's go into this one anyways. In this one, it is not a Red Riding Hood, but it is a Velvet Red Cap, which I say, all the more fashion. So Little Red runs into the wolf while on her way to give her ill grandmother cake and wine. That's what heals me as well. The wolf gets directions to her grandmother's house from Little Red and then points out some flowers to distract her. As she's distracted, he runs over to grandma's, eats her, and then Red comes and he is in full granny costume until she comes close and then he eats her as well. After that, he's so full that he falls asleep and snores just really loud. 
I would too. Anyways, he snores so loud that a huntsman hears him and get this, the huntsman realizes the wolf probably ate grandmother so he cuts open his stomach with scissors until both Little Red Riding Hood and the grandmother come out. They now fill his open stomach with stones and at this point he is still somehow sleeping. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper too so I kinda get it. Anyways, he tried to get up but was so heavy he fell dead. So then the huntsman skinned the wolf for the fur, the grandma ate cake and drank wine and felt better, and everyone just kind of happily ever after and learned their lesson to not stray from the main road. In our number 8 spot we have The Little Mermaid. The original story of The Little Mermaid is terrifying. The Little Mermaid took her own life. After doing research for this, I now know that this version is the original. She took her own life because she was heartbroken because the prince married someone else. So sad. She jumps through hoops for him and even thinks about killing him before she jumps into the ocean and takes her own life. Honestly, I can see why some moms are cautious about this tale. In our number 7 spot we have Pinocchio. Apparently in the origin story, Pinocchio kills Jiminy. What? And he sells the book that Geppetto gets by selling his last coat. While researching, I also learned that the structure of the story kind of follows the stories of peasants at the time and how they would venture out into the world but were naively unprepared for what they would find and this was due to the industrialization of Italy. Interesting stuff. Side note, <laughs> whenever I hear the name Pinocchio, I can't help but to say it like Geppetto does, Pinocchio. <laughs> In our number 6 spot we have the princess and the frog. There are a few versions of the princess and the frog and they may surprise you to hear. Although after hearing the little mermaid's dark past, possibly not. This Disney movie is not very much like its original counterpart, the frog prince. In the frog prince, we still have the lovely princess that kisses the frog, but she is deeply disgusted by the frog for tricking her into making a deal and apparently she throws the frog prince against the wall and breaks his spell. Hmm. There is also another version where she cuts the frog's head off. And then another version where the frog tries to sleep on her pillow, which makes no sense to me. I suppose I would have to see it, but it sure sounds creepy. The one where she chops her head off though, damn. That is intense. <laughs> I'm glad they took that out of the Disney version because I feel like that would have definitely changed the vibe of the film. In our number 5 spot we have Frozen. Okay guys, I'm going to tell you about the origins of Frozen, but then I want you to let it go. The Snow Queen in the origin story is actually evil and takes a young boy and keeps him with her power and will only free him if he solves a puzzle and spells the word eternity. I don't understand. Then a girl with a heart filled with love comes and saves the boy with her power of true love. So not quite the story about sisterly love, but it is about romantic love, so possibly not too far from the point of Disney's Frozen, that love is so much more powerful than fear. In our number 4 spot we have Sleeping Beauty. Another dark fairy tale for you. This is sort of the origin of Sleeping Beauty, never one of my favorites to be honest. The dress was for sure. I love anything pink. Anyways, apparently in the origin story, the prince's mother was part Ogre. Yeah, that shocked me too. But not only that, she wanted to eat Sleeping Beauty for dinner because she was an ogre. Apparently also in the origin, Sleeping Beauty wakes up from her long sleep because one of her twins is eating her finger or sucking on her finger because she apparently conceived and gave birth to twins while sleeping. It's all deeply disturbing and I wish I could unlearn this one. <laughs> in our number 3 spot we have Beauty and the Beast. The classic tale of Beauty and the Beast is one that touched the hearts of many when Disney put out their version. But like every other fairy tale on this list, there were many parts that were altered for the PG Disney versions. For example, in the origin, the Beast was actually put under a spell by a dark fairy who fails to seduce him. Honestly, that makes sense. A woman scorned is a scary thing. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned is a popular phrase for a reason. Apparently the Beast takes pure bad and forces her to have her hands chopped off by threatening to take her father. Apparently there is also another version where she chops her own hands off so that she is not as attractive to her brother or father. Ah, yeah, I'm super uncomfortable. In our number one spot we have Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This is a story that I'm sure you have heard plenty of times in your life if you were born in North America at least. There once was a golden haired girl that stumbled upon a cottage with three beds, three porridges, and basically three everything. 
Plot spoiler, it's the home of three bears who discover her sleeping in the bed. And some, she befriends them and stays for dinner. Well, in the Robert Southey's version, Goldilocks is actually an old woman. And when the bears discover her, she jumps out of the window and falls to her death. Apparently, there is another version where the bears eat her, naturally. Coming into number six, we have the Goose Girl. I hadn't heard of the Goose Girl, but I hear it's a very popular tale in Germany and Eastern Europe after doing a bit of research. It's a bedtime fairy tale, and its origins are the stuff of nightmares. To cut a long story short, in the original tale, a deceitful maid is thrown into a barrel with spikes and rolled around till she dies. Ah, some classic medieval torture. It does sound particularly grim. Is it worse than being hung, drawn, and quartered, or better? What about being pulled apart by horses? Coming into number four, we have Mulan. The original Mulan was written by Chi Reno and was called The Ballad of Hua Mulan. Any ballad can't be a good thing. Hua Mulan was a legendary Chinese woman. In the ballad, like in the fairy tale, she disguises herself as a man in order to join the army, and she falls in love with Luo Cheng. When she comes back from war, she discovers that her father has died and her mum has remarried. Not only that, the man who waged the war in the first place has called for her to be his concubine, so basically his sex life. Instead of doing that, she commits suicide, but before she does, she gets her sister to dress as a man and send a letter to Lu Chang. Her sister does, but then ends up sleeping with him herself. Horrifying. Coming into number two, we have the Pied Piper of Hamelin. So we know the story of the Pied Piper. It's a popular but admittedly dark fairy tale in which a town in Lower Saxony, Germany, is infested with rats, as it probably would have been in the Middle Ages. Enter the Pied Piper, a man with a magical pipe who does a deal with the town mayor to lure all of the rats away. He does this successfully, and the town is rid of the rodents. However, the mayor refuses to pay, so the Pied Piper uses his magic pipe to lead away all of the town's children in revenge. Well, it turns out the dark origin here is that it's actually true. Surviving town records from the church in Hamelin say that in the year of 1284, on the day of St. John and Paul on June 26, by a piper clothed in many kinds of colours, 130 children born in Hamelin were seduced and lost at a place of execution near the Coppen. It is thought that the children were taken as part of the children's crusade and the whole business with the rats was added later. Some even say that the real Piper was a who abducted the children in their sleep. Mm -hmm.